sir. We are back. Welcome, everybody, back to the Six Rings Kane Show. Uh, literally oh, 48 hours after, um, obviously, the big show that we had on Monday night, uh, breaking down the hire of uh, Coach Mario Cristobal. And uh, the madness continues, and we're actually joined by, by a madman uh, today, our, uh, our special guest, which I'm very happy to have on. Um, good buddy of ours. Good buddy of the network. Let's... Fuck it, we'll say it. Uh, Toast from the Orange Bowl Boys. And um, obviously, I've known you, Toast, for quite a bit now and, and some of the other guys here. So thanks for joining us, buddy. I appreciate it, man. Absolutely, man. Thanks for having me. Good to be and, here. It's been an awesome, we, awesome week. Oh, my God. <laughs> tell me about it. it has an, and today, we got even great, uh, better news as well. So, yeah. Um, and I'm joined by uh, by the other Five Reasons Sports Degenerates here, Paul Austria, Danny Gillette, and and um, Mr. Popular uh, Pulitzer Prize Award winning uh, writer over there, uh, Mr. Vish. What's going on, fellas? How you guys doing? What's up? What's up? Good, good. Um, and by the way, Danny, what's up with your boys down in Nebraska, huh? Hiring Mark Whipple. A lot of changes this week. A lot of changes this week. So we'll have to see how it goes. <laughs> um, <laughs> let's let's get right into it. Obviously, you know, look, Toast, we, we spoke a lot on Monday about the hiring of uh, Chris Ball, but we really didn't, obviously we didn't get a chance to speak to you. I definitely want to hear your your thoughts on everything. You were very active, you, uh, Roman, a lot of the guys, uh, from, you know, all the guys from Rome, uh, the Orange Bowl boys were re- really active um, and kind of posting some, some really good information out there um, and talking trash to everybody, which was even better. Uh, so that was a lot of fun, but um, I want to kind of get your your thoughts on the whole hiring, the um, you know everything that went down, and how excited you are for Mario to be down here in uh, at the U. Finally, it is uh, it's it, it's been surreal. I mean, you got to realize I am um, I'm in my you know late forties, so I have been a Canes fan for a long ass time. So I remember you know uh, you know uh, eighty seven, eighty nine, ninety one. I was an obnoxious ass in 2001. I can't even imagine if I had social media then I would have been banned. I mean, I can't even. Um, that's that's gonna be one of the best things about this whole thing. Us becoming great again when actually with Twitter, we never had, we. This was yeah, we were all great before that. Um, but it's just I can't believe it. I, I honestly, I still can't believe it. I keep pinching myself. Um, this I, I've been so ingrained the last you know what 18 years basically ever since. You know, the Nevin Shapiro stuff happened and Paul D went away of just nothing, just, you know, not even mediocrity, just just bad. And the fact I never thought I never had it. I, I never thought that we would actually do this. I never thought the board and the school would ever choose to invest in athletics and mainly football like this again. I mean, I thought Donna killed it dead. I didn't think it was ever coming back. Uh, I dreamed, but the fact that what has happened over the last like five, seven days or whatever it is, is just insane. It's just insane. Yeah, it really has been. I I mean, I just think the whole process, like you said, like going from, you know, everybody saying Miami doesn't have the money. Miami's not going to do this. Miami's not going to invest. We're all done. And then the national media obviously has no freaking clue as to what they're talking about. Most of the time, especially with the local, you know, with with, with Miami, um, I think there's a lot of misconceptions out there, and, and clearly there was, right? Uh, we're obviously here, um, you know, with with a nice um, with a nice chunk of change that we're uh, we're getting ready to spend, uh, not only on Mario Cristobal but on his staff, right? It was kind of uh, released that uh, they're going to have about eight point seven five million dollars uh, for his staff, which is number one in the ACC. Uh, and that's impressive, right? Uh, especially Dude, all the it's names. bizarro world from Seinfeld, that episode where everything was flipped. That is, I mean, just like all of a sudden now we went from having nothing and now we're spending more than anybody. Like it's just, I mean, it's just, it's just the absolute extreme is what's insane. And, and how about this for the younger guys that younger people that don't watch um, Seinfeld or anything? It's like Stranger Things, all right? The upside down world. All right, let's just do nice. it that way. Yeah, yeah. I, I get Thank the you, Seinfeld. Man. I got the Seinfeld reference. I got the Seinfeld too. I was in on right? the Seinfeld reference. <laughs> I, I'm old enough for that too, but you know, maybe some of the younger bucks you know, <laughs> don't, don't get it. But uh, uh, yeah, it is. It is really crazy. It is uh, strange. Um, and, and then of course, you know, just the press conference alone la- yesterday made everybody want to cry and i did uh, and run through a wall at the same time yeah no yeah i got misty uh thank thank god the acc network uh televised the whole thing they yeah. televised everybody um and uh thankfully i don't have comcast so i have these well i think i think they just got it right didn't comcast yeah, folks did. just get it they just got it okay cool 
Um, but yeah, dude, it was just seeing everybody out there and um, his dude. I mean, now you know why. I mean, I think Javon ha Holland came out and said he's just like a fireball of energy. Um, and you just you just saw it. You saw that. And I compared that to listen. I was a fan of Golden's press conference. I was a fan of Manny's press conference, but this was a different level. Like, I thought those were great press conferences. Now I saw this one, and he just, I mean, whew, I was ready to do squats. <laughs> I can imagine. Well, I don't know if I can imagine, but I, I you doing squats. That would no, be I, I was ready to suit up, too, and then, yeah. you know, I realized I don't have athletic ability, so exactly. that wouldn't work. But, but, you know, I was going to put the jersey on anyway. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Um Again, obviously, we're all excited about it. Uh, I definitely want to get Paul and Danny's thoughts on it because uh, you guys weren't on the show on Monday. So just, you know, you, you your idea, Paul, you're actually up there in Portland. So I kind of want to get an idea as to if you if you see, you know, certain people talking about it, what's the kind of the the um, the feeling that some maybe, you know, Oregonians um, you know, feel about the whole thing with, with Mario leaving and coming down to Miami. If you've been able to talk to anybody over there about anything. I mean, I haven't talked to anyone like directly, but I feel like I kind of just feel like a very like somber mood now. Like everyone's just kind of dumbfounded and confused just cause like, you know, it, it's not like Oregon, like, you know, when coaches leave teams, when like they're kind of trending downward, like I think of like Jimbo when he left FSU, like that kind of deal, like it's, it's not like Oregon's a bad team. They're still in the thick of things. Like they're still going to be in a good bowl game. There's they still have a good roster, but like it's just like wow, this is this is weird. And you know, I think people for a long time thought that Oregon definitely was the better job than Miami. Like why would you why would you even consider you know doing that at all? You know, and then if, if you know everyone thinks about Oregon's facilities and you know their success, then Miami's kind of been like very average, I guess, the past like maybe like ten or so years. Like they've had some good years or no i would say above average years some bad years um but you know everyone thinks that might have been past but you know now i think with the fans here it's just it's it's a little bit weird now you know and i think that um i guess some of it's mostly people here mostly just feel lost you know and i think you know like you guys mentioned like i i watched the press conference last night in full and you know i haven't i haven't played I played receiver in like middle school and I was like, yo, I'm find me an orange and green Jersey right now. I'm ready to go out there for crystal ball. I will do, I will, I will die for Mario crystal ball right now. Like I, it was the infused energy that we need in such a long time. And I feel like for the, for, for the first time in a long time, we have a coach that just understands what it's, what it means to put on that orange and green Jersey. You know, like, it's kind of like he, he knows what the goal is and he's kind of just like a plug and play guy, but, Cristobal knows what he's doing. Like he's, he, it's a, in a way, this is a kind of, this is like a personal venture of his now to really restore the U back to where it was and even help it grow. And, you know, like, like we've seen the reports of him already, you know, just right after the press conference, like you see him at Miami Central with like six other coaches, still in that same suit, still in that same tie, still that same uh, UM pin on his suit. Um, and even this morning when he, I think he spoke to Shamar Stewart and then he was already on a plane to Texas. Like there's, there's something about Cristobal now. There's just this renewed excitement. There's just this new, uh, renewed energy that I feel like, you know, every, every year we saw this, he's like, oh, we're, we're hyped. You know, whoever the coach is, you know, says like, this is, this is new. We have, you know, we have new assistant coaches, like we have new coordinators. This is going to be great. And then it just slowly like dies down and we're like, oh, it's the same. It's the same thing. But with yeah, I don't, we're like, yeah, yeah, I don't think he's going to lose that that intensity and and yeah and, and all that. So that's that's what I think is is really exciting as well. Um, and by the way, I think Paul may maybe go out there and run like a four nine for him. So that'll be nice, man. As a wide yeah. receiver, just get open, man. All you got to do is get open. Don't worry about your speed. We'll figure that I one mean, out after. I can catch. It's, <laughs> I can catch. So it's all as, matters. as usual, before we get to Danny, of course, our favorite guy right here. My boy Chug Mo Beer with the dono, $20 tono. Dono, thank you, Chug. Appreciate the love, man. Great show. Smash the like button. Yes, smash the like button. Let's go, Canes. Miami Herald front page. Miami Herald front page. I don't know what the hell that is, but okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, my oh Miami, I guess Miami hires Dan Radakovich. Uh, another great day to be a Miami Hurricane Canes for life. Let's go. Yeah, we'll talk about that. Uh, we're definitely gonna get into AD higher. Um as well as that's some good news, and, and we're, we're hearing about some other hires as well um, on the staff already. But um, 
Yeah, and just real quick, Anthony said hi to several of us individually in the chat. What's up, man? <laughs> Hello, Anthony. <laughs> Anthony, you're missing Toast, and I think you're missing Paul, you're, too. You're, you're, you're missing Paul, man. Too. You got to say yo to them, too, all right? Um, uh, appreciate the love, guys. Jared, as well. Uh, that's what happens when you hang your hat on is Nike money. Yeah, yeah, pretty much, right? Yeah. So, uh, and 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 that's 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 the sentiment I think over over in Portland is guys are just down because they thought that maybe Phil Knight was going to be able to, um, you know, to pull pull it together, right? Exactly, and sp spend the money. And I don't think Phil Knight has never been. Everybody thinks that Phil Knight is this guy that's going to go out and throw down a hundred million dollars for a coach or or try yeah. to retain him. He's never done it before. He didn't do it with Willie Taggart, right? When Willie Taggart left for FSU, I don't know if he did it for. Um, for Chip Kelly, for for any of these guys, so I think that uh, that's a misconception. Uh, he was still the number, the, the fifth highest paid coach in the Pac-12. So you're talking about, you know, us coming in and 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 I saw a, a real cool, um, uh, a real cool uh, report that said, uh, you know, all, uh, look at all the uh, assistance that came from Alabama from that 2015, 2016 season, and um, it was uh, Lane and T Mel Tucker and Mario and all these guys getting paid so much and, and rightfully so look I, I think we're all excited about uh the crystal ball hire D dj uh talk to me a little bit about how you felt about that that hire i'll tell you what after listening to the press conference i was ready to get out of my wheelchair and run some laps i mean this guy knows <laughs> this guy knows what it takes to get the job done he's familiar with the history of miami and he wants to make this program better he's not just you know, talking the talk, he's trying to walk the walk. As you guys mentioned, he's already out there recruiting, bringing his assistants with him, and he gets what it means to be a Miami, a be a Miami Hurricane. He gets what it means for the program and the brand that it brings to the table. And this was an amazing hire for the for the University of Miami and the football program. They needed this energy for quite a while, and now they finally have it. And I'm excited to see what he can do. Uh, he's had a history of recruiting five-star guys. And hopefully he can bring that energy to Miami. Yeah, absolutely, man. And, and, and real quick, Jared, Jared's, Jared's comment is awesome. Uh, post it if you can there, Vish. Yeah, but Paul is a possession receiver, baby. That's what it's about right there. <laughs> <laughs> um, look, any good. comment paul any yeah, comment yeah. or are you gonna let that one go you got hands i, I did i did like catch the shorting pass i did like catching the short passes and uh pulling a spin pulling out a spin mover too so i mean you're not wrong there All right. you got the burners paul you got the after you got the burners i like i have the low-key burners like okay. i i like making guys miss that was my thing <laughs> they couldn't stop me uh I, I have no tape i'm sorry i have no tape though this this is actually a good transition because Gary Gary uh, our boy Gary Caput uh, just posted at Footballville who is is a pretty trusted source I, I think uh, you can say kind of knows this thing says that uh, Brian McClendon is uh, also going going to join um, Mario Cristobal here in Miami uh, and so, so I, I, this is where I kind of wanted to go uh, transition to the current to the to the current staff. And then, of course, the staff that Mario is going to bring in. We're obviously hearing word that uh, Garen Justice is also going to take the position as the offensive line coach over at SMU with Rhett Lashley. Mm -hmm. uh, we saw, um, uh, you know, a couple other guys leave. Uh, Bob Shoup is over at uh, – where did he go now? I forgot uh, now. Bulls, uh, USF. At USF. There you go. Yes, at USF. Which, so. which is something right there because we were all like, if Manny stays, I think he's going to make right. Shoup our defensive coordinator. He's at USF. Like right. that's what that that's the amount of upgrade we have. Like that we were gonna make that guy the defensive coordinator most probably. <laughs> yeah. but no, no knock on him. He has a no, great resume. No. Yeah. But but he didn't right. go get like another P five job. He went to USF. Like right. that's telling right there, and and how how low our standards have dropped. Right, right. Um, and the, I, I mean, obviously, uh, Coach Maribal is. Um, going to be the offensive line coach. He's already on the recruiting trail with Mario, uh, has offered a few guys, which uh, some, some of the uh, Ducks fans are a little salty about that already, uh, trying to get compliance involved. Listen, the guy's already – I mean, he's not going to be out there in, in UM gear uh, coaching and recruiting if he hasn't signed on the dotted line, on the dotted line to be the offensive line coach. Uh, you know, we heard we heard things about um, him and Garen Justice already getting, getting together and showing tape – uh, and just as showing tape to, to Mirabal about the uh, the current guys on stat on, on on the team. So talk to me a little bit about to Tosa. I really want to kind of get your take on how you can see this staff shaping up and maybe some guys that 
you might want retained. And I know that, that that's a big question mark about retaining guys on previous staffs. Right. Talk to me a little bit about what you think, uh, you know, from the top down. Well, I think that, you know, right now, I think there's definitely a couple guys on the staff who are auditioning. Um, you know, obviously they're going to be on the staff through the bowl game. Uh, but right now I think there's a couple guys in particular. I mean, we got to realize that Mario's worked with field before. Uh, I think there's a spot for field on the staff, but not as a coach. I think you're, uh, you're like, uh, in the back room, you're like recruiting coordinator, something right. like he was before with him. That's what he was uh, in yeah. Oregon, right? The recruiting coordinator. I, I, uh, yeah, exactly. I also think that uh, I think Ish has a shot because he landed Wes, and I think he has a shot to maybe uh, stay on the staff in some form. Not as I'm not sure he he stays on as a linebackers coach, but um, outside of that, I mean, I think those are the uh, those are the guys on staff right now. T. Rob for me is a wild card. I, I don't know. I, I've I've heard that that, that him and uh, Mario have clashed on the recruiting trail in the past. Um, so I don't know what that relationship is. Um, obviously, uh, he would be qualified. I wouldn't mind seeing uh, T. Rob stay on the uh, stay on the staff, but uh, I think the best part is that you have an, un an unlimited budget. Like they're talking about grabbing Schumann over in Georgia. I mean, like you, there's no. It's not like oh, we can't go after these guys because they make too much money. Like everybody's on the table. We can have the highest paid DC in the country if you want. Everybody. We can have the highest paid OC. I, I mean, it's insane. We win. I mean, we have all. The, we're the richest team in the country. That's okay. the way they're acting. So I'm going along with it. What the um, hell? Right? Yeah. So yeah. So from uh, from that standpoint, I'd listen. I'd love to see um, Joe Brady. He's got ties. I know that there's been talk that he's not doesn't love being a recruiter. I believe that a staff like this could carry a weak recruiter on it. Uh, if it is giving you, an, if, if if that guy's giving you an explosive offense, um, so yeah, I just think that the, I think the sky's the limit. I think everyone's on the table, um, but from the current staff, I think Pry Ish and Field, in my mind, had the two best spot chances of landing on here, but not as position coaches. Yeah, I, I'm I'm all the way in on Coach Field being here as well. Uh, definitely in a recruiting capacity because first of all, he is a hell of a recruiter. Yes, he is. Um, he, definitely he knows is. the area. And he's got he's he knows this area. He yep. knows he knows. I mean, he's got to know the West Coast to a certain degree as well, because being over there with uh, uh, with Mario for for some time. But um, I just think he's an all around good dude. And I think players love to, to, to play and to be around Coach Field. And so I think that's why, you know, and obviously his past relationship with Chris is going to play a huge role in that um, ish. I don't know as much about. Yes. He, you know, he's still a very he is also a hell of a recruiter as well. And he knows Texas. Um, and he knows his time Texas, with right? AM. So he's so exactly. he's got I just I I I am only seeing ish because he landed uh Wesley and no one thought we were gonna land him. And right. so I think that 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 counts for something with Mario. Um, but we'll see. We'll see. And well, I would say the most important hire so far is the fact that we got Feldon here. Yes. Because yes, that dude's so. gonna become a freaking star. Two I years from now, he, you're gonna see a cutout <laughs> of him anytime you walk into GNC, he's gonna have a TV show. Miami's gonna make him a star. It's gonna. It's unbelievable. Oh. He is so exciting. Um, Juicy. I love, <laughs> just look at oh, Juicy. <laughs> I mean, that's awesome. He is awesome. He's he's electric, man. He is, and he's a huge guy. I mean, look, he's he's a he, on top of everything. He's a hell of a strength and conditioning coach. Right? Oh no, no, he's amazing. And well, here's I mean, the thing, I, and you know that there's going to be at some point there's got to be some sort of a mustache thing between him and and, and Andy. They got there's something <laughs> something's going to have to go on there, like a, a oh, competition yeah. or something. Yeah, Storm give Andy morning. some of that wax. Storm warning. What's good, buddy? What's going on? Um, uh, do you think let's let's actually take before we even talk a little bit more about the coaching staff, uh, which Toast just mentioned, Aaron Feld uh, is coming in to be the new strength coach. Uh, Mar uh, Alex Maribal is the offensive line coach. Um, someone mentioned Brian McClendon is going to come in um, and join the staff as well. So I, li I like all those moves. I'm OK. I'm, I'm, I'm not opposed to 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 those at all. Um, just a couple of things here. Let's see what what Anthony wrote. Uh, Pano, I'm I'm gonna wait and see mode still. I understand we just hired Mario, but with the history of the administration not having any faith. Oh, there we go. Not having any faith in foot in the football program. I'm afraid they might pull the funding. I mean, no. This is what do you guys no. think about him bringing uh, KP back for defensive line? Grabbing um, from FAU. Uh, I, I think. Mm -hmm. I'm okay with it. Um, oh, this, yeah. He's 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 very experienced. He he's I I believe you is it FAU now at this point. He's yeah, bounced FAU around quite a bit. Right now, yeah. I know he was at NC State for a long yeah. time. He's got some ACC experience. 
I mean, to me, when you start getting down into that, a lot of it is scheme, technique, how they teach. And that's you want a lot hard. of ex canes on the staff. That's my thing. I, I don't I'm want the a, reason. I'm... I guess my, my comment on this is I don't want the reason they're on the staff okay. to be their next cane. Okay. Um, and I don't think we've done that yet. No. <laughs> no. no. <laughs> you know, I, 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 so that, that would be kind of my take on that. Because they're, look, we're, it's been a, a rough 20 years, but we are kind of full, the age of people that are kind of in their prime and coaching mm-hmm. aligns to our glory years. Yes. And so there's a lot of like football knowledge that are alums of, the, of Miami yep. all over the place. But so, so there will naturally be qualified people that went to Miami that show up, but I definitely wouldn't start like reaching for people that aren't qualified. Cause I think in the past, especially our fan base gets enamored oh, with, Oh yeah. With, this guy was a great player. He should be the coach. Like, hey, well, you see the that coach. Randy's going to be on field for FSU now. I did oh, see yeah. that. I did and, see and that. And so now, hold on. Now, didn't he coach uh, Florida for a game as an interim? Yeah, he was. So he was, there's a chance so. if Norvell gets fired, Randy could be the head coach of all three schools for at least a game. Oh man! Wow. You know that is a that is a a non-zero chance like that. Right? I, mean, exactly. I mean that that or, or non-zero chance of happening like that. That is that is on the table because I the don't table. think things are going to get much better for FSU and. <laughs> And with Miami and UF rolling out new coaches and having that mm-hmm. excitement, you know they're already in Tallahassee looking at their two rivals and like, how come we don't get a new one? Yeah. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and they keep missing bowl games. Like, that is a recipe <sighs> for quick fire next year. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> let's let's see another one here. Do you think Mario can convince Jake Johnson, the tight end, um, that, uh, that just committed uh, – that he just decommitted – uh, to come to Miami with our history of developing all pro tight ends into the NFL. Well, first of all, he's the brother of Max Johnson, who is uh, who was the quarterback at LSU, who decided to enter the transfer portal as well. Therefore, his uh, his brother Jake, the tight end, also decommitted, um, and it's been kind of reported or rumored that they're going to go ahead and go over to FSU, both of them. So mm-hmm. to to answer that question, no, I don't think that the uh, Jake Johnson would. Uh, entertain coming to Miami. And I mean, I'm okay with that. I understand he's one of the best tight ends in the country. Uh, Max is a pretty good quarterback. Uh, and, and it's good to get good talent at FSU also, because then it makes it even more exciting and it makes it more fun when teams start, you know, when, when the, our rivals start to get a little better as well. It's Listen, just, Max Johnson had a good year. He did. For LSU. Like he, like FSU needs him. Like he could help speed their comebacks significantly. Like he's an actual quarterback. Oh yeah. I don't have one. I think I think it's uh yeah so just to answer that I don't think Jake Johnson comes in, um and we'll, we'll I, I'll, we're kind of getting ahead of ourselves here with the recruiting stuff, uh but it is important because I definitely want to cover it. But real quick, just going around the horn on on uh with Paul and Danny uh, a little bit about the coaching staff stuff. Who do you want to see? Just give me let's say give me two names that you want to see retained, and maybe two t- two names that you really want to see come in. And join the staff. We'll start with Daddy on this. We'll start well, with DJ. First. As you're as you're, as you're answering that, I'm gonna throw this uh, question up here and, from Anthony. If you want to work it in as well. Yeah, and, Vi- and Vish, by the way, give your two cents on this as well. But go ahead. We'll start with DJ on this. Marcus Van Dyke did in terms of recruiting. I think you need to have at least one really good recruiter on the staff, and he was able to get a string of commitments last July. And now, granted, I understand. We had some issues with the class because the class was a little bit smaller and it was a, moved a little bit slower than we anticipated, but he was able to get a couple corners whose names escape me right now, but I'm sure you guys can remember them. And um, so I would love to see him retain just because he's familiar with the area. He has a history of recruiting the defensive side of the ball and he can develop players now to 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 anthony's comment ed reed is somebody that i would be interested in keeping i understand he's not really in a coaching role but um i get the sense and you guys can correct me if i'm wrong that he kind of brings some sort of football knowledge having been one of the best players in miami history and you know, he's been around the program, he's been in the program, so I'd be interested to see what he would be able to do with Mario in terms of this new coaching staff, because I do think it is important to kind of have Miami ties on the coaching staff. Like Vish said, you don't want to have, 
you know, Miami ties on the staff just because they're Miami. They need to be good coaches. So Ed Reed and and Demarcus Van Dyke would be interesting for me to keep. Now, as far as coaches that we want to see bring in, I'll be honest, I'm not too familiar with some of the names that um, that are out there right now because I've been sifting through the transfer portal and all the coaching hires, and there's literally thousands of names. So I've just been, if you guys could assist me on that, there's just so many names out there right now. My head is spinning. That's fine. Yeah, we'll, 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 we'll get we'll, – actually, you know what? How about this, Paul? Kind of talk to me a little bit about the offensive coordinator position because to- Toast mentioned one guy, right, that's uh, that's kind of a big, big hot uh, hot name right now is uh, Joe Brady, obviously, um, after what he did at LSU. And then um, at Carolina, I don't think he got a fair shake. Uh, shake. I think he was a scapegoat there on, on what was a terrible season. He, You know, they had no quarterback play. They had – Christian McCaffrey was out. They really didn't have great wide receivers over there. So I don't know if it was really – he was just a, you know, kind of a victim of circumstance per se over there. But, um, you know, that's a big name. Obviously, we're hearing Ken Dorsey a lot as well. Um, I think that uh, another name that's starting to pop up a lot, uh, even though – and, and Vish, I, I know – I don't know if you're such a big fan of this. And a lot of Canes fans aren't because of past things that's, that are going on with this family. But Kendall Bryles is another name that's starting to pop up a lot as well. So – um, and, and of course, others. So, you know, who who are kind of some of the names that maybe you want to see come in here? Um, well, I I agree with the sentiment on Bryles, especially. I don't. I feel like I'd rather not deal with like the media backlash, the fan backlash, if that happens. Um, man, Joe Brady, me all day. Um, I'm if if Cristobal and just the staff can find a way to, I guess, hide Brady's inability or not inability non-desire to recruit, then I'm fully on with it. Um, I think, you know, even if we just use the the one season at LSU as like the, I guess the example of what this offense could be like, I think, I think even if, I don't know, if, if McClendon is the receivers coach and he comes in and he pitches that, I feel like that's that's too good to pass up. You know, I think if if his, if his offensive knowledge is as they say it is, bring him bring him in and i think that um just a local guy too i think he went to he went to everglades high over in miramar so i feel like he's very very familiar with the area um i mean i feel like just going off the lsu season i mean that was that was probably one of the one of the best if not the best seasons ever by a college football quarterback ever and um going back to the um question of coaches like um who would want to keep i think field um i definitely want to keep field for recruiting purposes i feel like if if chris Wall mentioned of the whole idea of like shutting down or at least closing off south florida to the rest of the country having crystal ball and field on the same staff i think is like the closest thing you know like member field used to be uh i think for three years he was a coach at miami northwestern if that's if my memory serves me right um she, everyone here knows crystal ball as well um and at least i feel they can get a good stronghold on Dade county um with that you know i think that uh it, it, from from what I'm hearing, it, I feel like a lot of coaches in Dade County respect Cristobal. Um, they respect Field. Um, maybe I'm not 100% sold him as a tight end coach, but I feel like if you can keep him as like a recruiting director or like assistant recruiting director or something, I'm with that as well. Um, for another coach, uh, I'm I with T, I think I was gonna say T Rob, but I don't know if I'm 100% sold on T Rob as a coach. I feel like he does bring that energy. Um, but I feel like I don't know something. Something about him just throws me off. But well, I definitely well, love DBG. I think what ha- I think what happened with T. Rob is that he wasn't he wasn't allowed to really, um, kind of do what he came in here to do. I think that he was kind of uh, strapped with what he can do. I think that uh, 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 I'm trying to find the word for it, but I think Manny Diaz didn't allow him to really. Um, flourish down here and, and and it shows right they they had to talk about backlash they had some issues um mm-hmm. in that in that uh in the in that coaching office as well and that coaching staff with with those two so i i think that you know all things considered yeah i think t-rob might be an option i just don't know i don't so, know i i don't know if if, if chris wall is going to want to keep them around so yeah, one I, of the one of the the things and, and I, I'll put it back up there, uh, Anthony's comment on, on Jimmy Lake and we talked about Kendall Bryles. Like if we're really splashing the cash around, we don't need to make those compromise. I Jimmy Lake, I'm assuming we're just talking about the same guy that was Washington's head coach that got fired uh-huh. in the middle of the year. 
Yeah. There's a whole. I don't know exactly what happened there because they fired him. He was. He had. There, a lot of people came out and said he was like violent against players, like crossed the line. But then they fired him. Did not do the with cause and paid him his buyout. So maybe they couldn't prove it. But to me, when you start getting into those, like if we're really gonna pay, you don't need to take the shot at Kendall Bryles. I can get someone that does not have that in their background. Right. So I'm not really worried about backlash as much as just why are we making moral compromises or even in ambiguous situations when we got the cash, man. <laughs> we got we got the money now. We let let's throw it out there and like go get the elite guy with no skeletons in the closet and let's let's roll, right? If we're gonna if we're gonna spend the money, let's let's spend the money. Like I don't I think I'm certainly struggling with this. I think a lot of our fans are struggling with it. We, we tend to look for people with black marks or that have ties to school because we're like, well, they'll take our offer. <laughs> we're, just that we're, not, just, we're just so jaded by everything. Well, no, it's 20 that, years. Right? It's 20 years of that, yeah, though. It's, it's right. 20 years of there's got to be something wrong with them. Otherwise, someone else will pay them more and they won't come right. here. And it's, it's going to take a while for all. I, I was doing the same thing earlier today. So I have a discussion about Georgia's uh, defensive coordinator. And I was like, well, there's no way. And I was like, wait, no, we would pay. Maybe we'll pay more than Georgia. <laughs> Like, I mean, that's a realistic, that's like, to say right, too. right? It so, is. Yeah. So, like, it's just, it's going to take us all a bit to kind of get to that mindset. But I think we shouldn't have to take those chances anymore. Um, and, and that's kind of what I'm looking forward to overall is we can go pay top dollar and bring in quality people. So, like, we shouldn't have to say this guy's a recruiter, this guy knows how to coach. No, we should get guys that can do both. Right. right? right. I mean, and so, and the thing with Brady is, um, and I Just, know, by the way, I, I know Danny's going to say something about Brady. Yeah, Brady. and uh, I'll transition right over to, to Danny. Um, so the only the only question I have on him is he just got fired. I mentioned this on Monday's show, but he just got fired last week. Does he really want to get back on the treadmill immediately right now and, like, you know, be in Miami next week trying to sign kids? I, if, I I'm mean, him, if I'm him, sitting yes. on my pants. No, I would say, I would say yes, too. He's not okay. 85 years old, right? Like, he's, he's a young guy. He's full of – yeah. No, yeah, no, no I, I got that. I, I would just say, like, if I'm him and I just got fired from my NFL job, I'll, like, I'll take a couple of months off and figure it out. I know I'm a hot commodity. I don't need to do this right this second. I mean, if Miami threw me the cash and said, here, here, do you want to be our offensive coordinator? I would jump in a heartbeat, especially after dealing with the mess he had to deal with in Carolina, three different quarterbacks and an injured Christian McCaffrey. I'd say, hello, Miami. I'll come right on down. I wouldn't wait a second. And when you look at, like, what he did with LSU and the wide open offense that he had. Now, granted, the 2019 LSU Tigers were one of the best offensive teams of all time. I think with the kids that the new coaching staff can bring in and the kids that Mario wants to recruit and his knack for recruiting five star kids, I think he would be a good fit, meaning Brady. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, you know what? I like, I like Brady too. Um, I know that. And he grew up a Canes the... fan, didn't he? he I think yeah, he, did. he did. Yeah. yeah. So. Yeah, so I mean, there, there's that. You know, he he might want to take Vish, like your point. He may want to take a couple months off, but the Miami job is only open right now. Like, if he waits a couple months, it's going to be closed, and it may not. He may never get a chance to do it again because we know that he eventually he wants to get back to the NFL. Like, it would be a short stay here. You know, it would turn Miami into what it used to be back in the day, a jumping, uh, a stepping stone to the NFL. And, and that's what it's always really been. So, like, that's what I, it was. I, yeah, I don't, I don't think I, I would be opposed to that at all. Whereas. Maybe if you get a guy like, uh, and I think it would be the same concept for Ken Dorsey. If Ken Dorsey is not going to stick around that long. I think he wants to be an NFL guy as well. Uh, will he come back because well, now, you know? Here's the thing: I don't know if Ken he's gonna Dorsey's going to get offered an NFL OC exactly. job this year. Right, so, right. like, I just think that uh, I mean, that's a lot of I money. Mean, uh, but yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, it's NFL. <laughs> yeah, but that, that's why, like, on Brady, he's still getting those checks. Right. So, like, I. I mean, I, again, if he, yeah, to, to Toe's point, if he wants the Miami job, this is his chance to take it. I think that would be, he is, he is local. This might be the only job he gets back on the treadmill for. But Now, granted, the last time a, a Kane did that, it was Mark Richt. You know, he was probably going to take a year off, but the Miami job was open, so he went right back yep. in, and in hindsight, <laughs> actually, after taking a year. Well, I, I, I don't know. I, I think the first, I think he, had we not, tore down everything he built we might we might be viewing it more as true like he was he was at the point in his career where he was not going to see it through but he laid a foundation we could build upon and then we well, he left it in better shape than he found oh yeah it. no it was there sure. there was an yeah. opportunity there if you, yeah. we hired a legitimate coach to really yes. to really elevate the program from mm -hmm. a higher place than it is right now but we obviously know what happened from there so we'll just, yeah he, he just leave it, that alone he he brought us into the whole p5 legit p5 conversation right like okay now 
you know, you've, we're getting the facilities and we've got the guy that another P5 team may have wanted to hire anyways, regardless of whether he was on his last leg or not. Um, and then, like you said, we kind of sh- crapped the bed on, on that after. But uh, we'll go one, one more question on this. I think G-Men's has one question, uh, G-Men's 13, um, on one more one more guy. And, and uh, is Gary Patterson an option? Um, Toast, I, I, can you, you can take that one there. I know. I um. Uh, I mean, well, I don't know if if he's an option. I mean, he. I've heard. I heard he didn't want to leave TCU. Um, that they kind of pushed him out the door. Um, listen again. He's. I have no problem with him being DC if that's who they want to bring in. Because I mean, he's got the he's got the, the reputation. He's got the the resume. Sure. I just that's that'd be insane. That's just see. That's another one of those. That's an insane hire to me. Like getting the the guy who's been the head coach at TCU for the last twenty years. And turn them into something to come over here and immediately become our DC. Like, who, who are we? <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't even. I don't even recognize. Who do we think we anymore. are now? <laughs> I don't even recognize you anymore. It's it's, it's insane. Yeah. Yep. 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 Um, who can we get to work with quarterbacks to take TVD to the next level? And Garcia. Uh, listen, <laughs> I mean, we we we've, we've been saying we've been saying him for a while. Joe Joe Brady is, I think. You know, and and I know a lot of people don't think, oh, well, he's, you know, he's maybe not a quarterback coach. I, I, you know, hey, you didn't do so bad with a guy named Joe Burrow, right? So, and, you know, I, I think that he's he's got an understanding of how it is, you know, how, what it is to coach. A, let me rephrase it. He he knows how to coach quarterbacks, I'm sure, because he knows how to run the offense. Passing game, passing game coordinator needs to know how to work with a quarterback. However, again, we've got the money, right? We're rich, bitch, right? So, like, hey. Let's go get a quarterbacks coach, and that's it, right? We can do that now. We well, I mean, the staff like is the, the staff is capped, so you got yeah, you know, be what, ten, ju- ten, yeah, ten coaches. So you got to be judicious. That's why usually the quarterback coach and OC is the same person, right? In sure, college. sure. We're in NFL. You have like inside linebackers, outside mm-hmm. linebackers, weak side linebackers coach, strong side line because they just they can have as many coaches as they want. We're in college's cap. I will say, I think I think we're all. I don't. I haven't heard a dissenting opinion. I think we're all in agreement. If Brady wants to come, that's our guy. Yeah, I um, think so. Yeah. I think the way Dorsey, I saw some comments like not really wanting Dorsey. I think answering your question on the quarterback, that's where the Dorsey allure comes in. Um because yep. he's worked with multiple NFL quarterbacks and elevated them. Um the including Cam, Cam Newton. Yeah, Cam Newton oh. turned him into the MVP. You look look at Allen now, like he was look lost a few years ago and now he's an MVP candidate. So he's he's an elite quarterback coach, really. Is why why Dorsey is interesting because um, when you talk about D- TVD and then Garcia behind him, I think that's where the Dorsey allure comes from. So answering your question on who we can work with, I think that's that's where Dorsey comes in as like, hey, we know this guy can work with quarterbacks. Do any of you have any fear that we uh, we lose uh, Jake to the portal? I I thought about that today actually. I I feel like. Because TVD is going to be a sophomore next year. He's going to be gone right. after next year. The TVD's right. got one year left. That too. Yeah. yeah. That he, too. He, he does what he did this year. He's a top five pick. Right. It's like yeah. It's guaranteed. He's a. He's. Yeah. You know, so yeah. So he'll be gone. I think we have one year left of TVD. And then we have Brown coming in. Right. Um. Hmm, and people. It'd be nice and, to have hmm. that natural transition where then you hand it to Jake for a year and he comes in and lights it up and then. You yeah. Know. Yeah. I'd be more worried. Um. I, I think we'll be able to hold on to him this year. And then depending so. how next year goes, if TBD comes back or if he kind of gets passed over, I think that's mm-hmm. when we, we, we look at next. Just because, I mean, let's be real. Everyone, like, we weren't the only one that got all the feelings when Mario showed up. I think the players that are there, like, I want to be a part of this. Now, I think I, a, year from, be, a year from now, they might be like, I sh- did not want to be a part of this. But, <laughs> but I, I, would be surpri- I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of, you know, kids that maybe were looking to leave or kind of now like, hey, I want to I want to see what this is about. Um, let me give it a year. And, and by the way, he absolutely loves the University of Miami. He really does. And, and I know that that can change from mm-hmm. year to year because a kid like DJ Johnson loved the University of Miami as well. And he ended up going to play for Crystal Ball in Oregon. So um, I, I don't think he goes anywhere. Uh, I think the natural transition is. If TVD like like so says if TVD plays the way he played this year, then it's a wrap. Like he's he's gone, right? He's he's a Heisman front runner. He's a first round quarterback, and and then this is Jake Garcia's team. So, um, <clears throat> so yeah, that to answer that question, I don't think so. Uh, let's kind of move into uh, some of these some of these guys. I don't know who the hell they are. So this is what I would recommend. Okay, next Wednesday we're gonna have a kick ass recruiting show. 
All right, we'll bring in some of the top guys that are recruiting down here in, in, in South Florida. So stay tuned for that. So to answer your question, where the hell was it? Here we go. Uh, Macho Gaming, by the way, thanks. <laughs> That's a great name, Macho Gaming. All right, um, I got a question. Two recruits that are Caleb McKenzie, uh, defensive back for Central, and Julian Lewis, the wide receiver for Western. If, if Blue was here, he could tell you everything you need to know about those guys. Um, I, I see Paul kind of um, – uh, kind of going to town. You hear, you hear the typing. Yeah. I, I think I think Macho Gaming also has Google, my friend. Like it's all right. We can admit it. Look, yeah. look, we're not we're not experts on everything. I, I don't know who those two people are. I'm yeah. sorry. I don't know. All I can tell you is if he all I can tell you is if he plays for Central um, and Western, two of the top teams in the in, in the state of Florida, uh, then definitely uh, they they may be guys that that, that Mario's going to take a look at. I'm not I'm not too well versed. Wasn't on Mario that. Central yesterday? Yeah, Mario was at Central there you yesterday. Go. So we was, saw him was, yesterday. <laughs> yeah, he was there. With, with, and by the way, you know, going back real quick before we get into recruiting, the whole thing of having six guys there, I don't think people – people, I think, get the misconception that those are the guys that are going to be on staff. No, man, that that was a, that was a trial by fire. It's an audition. That I'm was sure. an audition. Yeah. That's an interview. Yeah. I want to see how you guys do for – Yeah, and I, get, and I can yeah. tell you right now, he's not keeping that many guys. No, he's the not. Set. <laughs> like, that was exactly just not. like, yeah, when people are like, oh, I guess those guys but are saying, like, pay, Those guys are still getting paid through the bowl game. Yeah. You know, oh, that's yeah. when the changes are going to happen. But it does kind of tell you who he's taking a look at and who he's not, right? Mm-hmm. Like, Packy's gone already, by the way. Like, he's, he's packing done. your bags, baby. Yeah, he packy he packing his bags. bags. Although I did see him there yesterday, but he did packy his bags last night, guaranteed. <laughs> uh, uh, so, uh, yeah, I mean, it is what it is. Uh, Jazz. Uh, so, so let's kind of move into the. Um, uh, we have a good quarterback situation. I think Finn Fan Finn Fan one seventeen writes there. Well, um, okay, here's here's game. a good question from Jared. I, I think we can get some probably interesting opinions on. So there you go. how many how many guys do you think Mario Oof. sends to the sends to the Porter well, to add a few more to his recruiting class? So so just to declare, I, I know what you're asking. The coach doesn't send people to the portal, but you know, kind of kind of tells them, you know, we're pretty. They nudge them. They position. nudge them over. Yeah, you kind you know you you, you have it as as long as you're straight up with them. Be honest, like I don't really see a, a much of a role for you. And then they'll. They and Mario's don't. that guy. He'll tell. Yeah, you. no, you just gotta be honest with them. So, um, but yeah, it'd be interesting. How to get many guys? I, I mean, I don't know how many guys. Well, like, I think I think the overall question is probably how much turnover do we expect on the roster, right? Like, do we do we think it's gonna be a lot, or we think it's mostly stable? I, think I feel like it there's is. only been a few guys that already left. Like, I feel like the guys that like Chris right. would have nudged over to the portal, they already left. Like guys, like that's Higgins, true. A lot of guys Pope, did did leak out during um, the season. Jennings, probably for, probably forgetting a couple Pope. more, but those Pope. those guys are already gone. And I feel like maybe maybe with the lineman group, I was going to say because Mir because I feel like Mirrorball. I looked at the recruits that Mirrorball has landed over the past few years. Oh my God, he's only landed mm-hmm. like blue chip guys. It's insane. It's insane. By the way, um, it's funny story. I actually saw Mark Pope on campus yesterday. With a UM shirt on and everything, walking into the Hex Center, which is interesting. See, see Jazz visit campus. He's got all these stories now. Yeah. Oh yeah. I was there, I, so, I was there for the press conference. You know, so, I was there for the conference. Actually, so. uh, Toast, I'd be interested to get your kind of thoughts on on how how you see the roster kind of reshaping. Yeah, I think that right now you're not going to. I, I would be. I'd be surprised if we see anybody going to the portal right now. I get. I'm guessing we'll see a handful. Um, as we uh, after the spring, as we get closer to camp, I think by that point Mario has had a time has had a chance to work with guys, that really evaluate some of the guys, and I think there might be at that point. And I think most likely, mostly on the offensive line, I think that's where you're going to see a huge upgrade. Um, I think there's a few guys there that are going to that can cut it with Mirabal. Um, there's a few guys I'm not so sure about. I'll tell you one guy I don't envy, even though I think he's a, he's a, he's a solid prospect, is Ryan Rodriguez. Holy pressure on him. The, you know the one lineman from Columbus, and I was gonna do. <laughs> he's got Mario and Mirabal. Oh Jesus! I mean, um, but yeah. So I think uh, you'll see. I'm guessing maybe like I don't know a handful of guys transfer out sometime in between this after the spring break uh, game and before camp opens up. You know who I think is gonna be uh, maybe a surprise to some, but I don't think a surprise to me that might end up in the transfer portal is uh, Nesta Silvera. Um, I know that's that's you know. Isn't he that leaving? I, I thought he was done. I, I thought he was no, leaving. I think, yeah. I think he's got an. I think he's got an additional year. I don't well, he has a year if he wants it, but I thought he pretty much declared that I'm out. Yeah, I, I thought he was going pro. Is yeah. he? Because I, yeah, I he, he, so. he was there on. He walked out on senior day and stuff. Yeah, <laughs> like, uh, <laughs> yeah. Like, uh, although although McLeod did that like four times and kept coming back. So. <laughs> 
Yeah. So I mean, I don't, I don't know. Um, no, um, I, I think, I think he's going to go into the draft. Is, yeah. is my understanding for Nesta. Well, I mean, he's going to go in, but I don't know if he's going to. Well, once come, you go in, come you, this is a basketball. He's gonna come out. <laughs> this is a basketball. You go in, you can't come out. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I just defensive linemen are uh, history defensive linemen leaving early to go into the draft. Not really not that great. great. For those defensive yeah, not linemen. that great. Yeah. That's why I, I think that's a lot why of UPS I, drivers in that list. But I think that that's why <laughs> I, I I must have heard someone talk. <laughs> that should be it. Um, I must have heard someone talk about it though. I must have heard someone talk about how you know he got away with a lot of shit, right? He got away with a lot of stuff, and, and so Mara's not going to put up with that kind of thing. So well, it's going to be a culture change for a right. lot of these kids because a lot of, I mean, we we talked about this before Diaz was was let go in terms of the culture we were building and the type of player we were attracting, and some of them were definitely here for the show. The chains oh, well, listen, and the, man, and the yeah. rings and the laid back yeah. attitude and the coach is my buddy. You're gonna Absolutely. like the new boss. <laughs> so no, he's gonna he'll rip your ass on the sideline. Yeah. The old boss wouldn't do it. This guy will. He will rip your ass on the sideline. Yeah. yeah so, so there's gonna be some kids that won't. Yeah. To, to Toast Point, get go through spring ball with Mario, and there's gonna yeah. be a, there's gonna be a few kids that are like, yeah, this isn't for me. Uh, here's here's another recruiting question uh, with the cornerback uh, from Anthony. Uh, with the Jazz, with the cornerback class being full, do you think Miami has a chance of convincing a guy like Denver Harris to commit to us instead of Alabama? Well, he's been committed to Alabama for quite some time now. Uh, I do know the name. Uh, I, I just don't – look, Mario's let, – let's put it this way, guys, and I want you guys to understand this, and this doesn't come from me. This comes from people that really know a little bit more than I do or a lot more than I do. Ma- Everybody is on the table. Everybody is on the table, whether you've committed or not. Mar, this is this is the power. This is the the attraction that Mario has as as one of the top recruiters in the country. Every single player that is out there that wants to come to Miami has the opportunity. Everybody is on the table. So throw you can throw at me Jaheim Singletary. You can throw at me Bear Alexander. You can throw at me Anthony Lucas. He's who's over there in, in Arizona. The two kids that he went to go see in Texas today, uh, uh, the two big, big offensive linemen, Cameron Williams, who was committed to him at Oregon, just decommitted uh, like, I don't know, 20 minutes before our show, our show started. He actually saw him today. So, I mean, I mean put it all together, right? Kelvin Banks, um, you know, who, who, was, who was considering Oregon as well, or I think may have been committed to Oregon also, decommitted. And guess where where Mario was today, right? He was in Texas looking at those two boys, five star big boy, five star offensive lineman. So, uh, and before that, he met with five star Shamar Stewart here at Pace before he took off on on, on a jet to, to Texas. So, uh, he's he, look, man. I'm not even concerned about recruiting at all whatsoever. That is the least of my uh, you know of my worries. Uh, you're gonna see this this 55th ranked uh, uh, team uh, recruiting ranking go from 55 to you know, to 15, to 10 uh, before it's oh, all said and done. I won't go that. I won't go that. That, that, I, I that might be so. a little I'm optimistic. Thinking, if you get this thing to 25 to, to 25 to 20, that's insane. He ain't getting this thing to 10. I'm, yeah, I'm and going, I, I also I'm don't. I just, 15. He'll be and, at number 15. And so. Right. He will, I hope I'm, so. From I'm, your lips I'm, to God's ears. Yes, I'm okay. back yeah, I, I think I think one of the things that goes into this recruiting class is this volume. And we're just not going to take a big class. And that's going to make our ranking a little bit lower regardless. The one thing I will say is it'll be harder to pull uh, people back like Denver Harris. When you when you decide to go to Alabama, you decide to go to Alabama. There is a there is a soft underbelly of people we can get back in that either Diaz didn't like, they want to stay local, but Diaz didn't like them, and they found another, you know, some coach that was going to take them, or they just didn't like the old staff, which can't really fault them for, that now that Mario's here will be a lot more. So Jazz's point, like, he'll get the one, the big thing with Mario is, He's so well respected locally. They'll answer his phone call. He'll get the meeting. I think some of these kids that you know, like Denver Harris, that come into Alabama, like whenever, like a long time ago. <laughs> let's just say it that way. Uh, I can have Paul Google it and tell me the exact date, but I'll just go with a long time ago. Um, like I think he's probably like you know dead set on going to Alabama. He's envisioning his future there. It's gonna be so much more difficult to pull someone like that. But there's these other there. Mario will be able to identify him. There's gonna be a lot of kids that kind of like Miami wasn't an option because of the previous staff that is now an option. They really do want to be here and he'll be able to get those. You better those put, alone. you better put what Michael V just wrote. You better put there. that shit up there. I That's what it. I'm I talking you. about. All right. Don't tell me. I don't know. All right. I didn't say you didn't know. I said it was optimistic. <laughs> I know. I know. I know. Here's one for you. 
<laughs> there was a rumor yesterday. I'm sorry, uh, Paul, no, that uh, that uh, I saw posted somewhere that Ivan's might be on the staff as a backroom recruiting mm-hmm. person. I did read that. I did. Yeah, see that. Oh, that's wild. That as a recruiting wild. analyst. Okay, cool. so that is, so see, he's already sucking up to the boss here, that's saying content right. class. Now we know where that comment came from. <laughs> Ivan is now suspect. You cannot trust his opinion. Oh no, this oh, is the no. number one class. <laughs> another yeah, another big. No one's leaving Broward then. No, yeah, right? Yeah. None of those Broward guys are leaving then. You might as well put Gabby and Rudy on the staff as well while you're at it. I mean, geez. Uh, Chuck, Chuck, as long as you don't put Gary from Chuck anyways, keeps, Chuck Chuck keeps funding Bieber. our show, yeah. Chuck, hey, thanks, <laughs> thanks for funding. You're a real one, Chuck. Thanks for the dono, Chuck. Guys, thanks for all your hard work on the you Support and subscribe. To- See, he's always giving us love, baby. Support and subscribe. Gains for life. Let's go. Thanks, Chuck. We appreciate it, my brother. Always, uh, he's, a, he's definitely a show favorite, man, so. We appreciate the love. Um, someone mentioned <laughs> someone mentioned this pipe dream here that said hey, uh, Robert Zuraf, Zuraf or whatever, uh, ain't Brady an, uh, an offensive coordinator and a wide receivers coach? If that's the case, let's just get him and Dorsey to coach the quarterbacks. Yeah, hey, what the <laughs> hell? Why not? Yeah, Saban's got a defensive background. Why not Saban yeah. for defensive yeah. coordinator? Yeah, let's bring him all in. So, so I don't. I mean to be fl- so. So Dorsey's already an offensive court. I mean a, a quarterback coach in the NFL. So his net stop is. As yeah. Toast mentioned, is probably like next year an NFL offensive coordinator. Perhaps if we make him offensive coordinator, QB coach, maybe assistant head coach as well, we could convince him to go to college, the college level. Yeah. But I even that's probably a long shot just because he, he is his name has a bullet next to it in NFL circles. So that's probably his next next job, but certainly not just the quarterback coach here. That's not going to happen. Um, let, uh, real quick before we get to Anthony's. Um, question here. I think Jared posted something here real quick. If you could post that up so I can read that a little bit easier um, because I'm getting old here. Uh, That doesn't help, but okay. I know (laughs) I still can't see it. Uh, I know it's not a main issue currently, but as far as facility upgrades, do we see now that we're rich Miami, uh, now that we're rich, Miami upgrading the locker room and other facilities? Bama locker room makes us look like Section 8. (laughs) Um... Yeah, that's already been talked about. That's look. If if you heard if you heard Mario's uh, comments, if you heard Mario's press conference yesterday, you know that that was a huge factor in, as well in him coming back to Miami is continuing to upgrade the facilities, continuing to pour money um, into everything that has to do with Miami. Obviously, we know all the rumors out there with Johnny Ruiz uh, wanting to build this a stadium. Um, if he, if he could build it in the sky, like an, av- like an avatar, he could probably, he probably want to do that shit also. So, um, and listen, nothing against it. I love it. I actually used to coach Johnny's kid in travel ball. So, uh, if he wants to do it, fine. You got to find the right place. I mean, I'm, I'm not opposed to it, finding but, a place. I, but yeah, you got to find a place, but I, I love the hard rock. So I don't care, man. If you get 75,000 people in the hard rock to like the, that Notre Dame game. I think that's that's that, that's the most electrifying pace I've ever been in. Uh, anyway, so it's it's fun. It's a world yeah, class. The, it's the, a world class stadium. That's where they host Super Bowls, guys. Like, come on. Get yeah, it together, and you know? and and some of the like traffic is so bad around campus already. Yeah, that, traffic's like, bad everywhere. Like, this is Miami. Who yeah, gives a shit? But but there's like no highway access really. Like it's sort of the Palmetto, but you got to drive yeah. down Bird Road or Miller Road quite a ways. Like that <sighs> that is just US one runs right by it. Oh God! Well, I just like like it's just, it's, to me. I, I envision sitting in traffic for like five hours after yeah. a game trying to get out of there. It's just like, really, do we want to do that? Well, also, I mean, listen, man, this isn't Florida or Florida State. You don't have an undergrad of thirty five thousand. Your right, undergrad yeah. is eleven thousand, of which maybe three will go to every game. Exactly. So, like, we're gonna like relocate yeah. this whole thing to be more accessible to like three thousand kids. I love them, but come on now. I mean, listen, I, I Orange Bowl was phenomenal. But in jazz, you mentioned it that that game against Notre Dame was as electric and as loud as anything the Orange Bowl ever did. It was right there. It that stadium can be that. Absolutely, we just got to be good. Right, exactly. So, so so there is some stuff. Just quick transition talking about the AD. So I don't obviously I guess everyone doesn't read Twitter twenty four hours a day like the rest of us. But um, Dan Radakovich is supposed to be announced as athletic director tomorrow. So I know someone's asking if there's an update. Yeah, that. It's been useless. confirmed by multiple by multiple. What is this useless useless one? 
oh, but you guys don't live off US one. It's a Miami joke. I thought you would get oh, it. Yeah. You oh, you <laughs> Jeez, I live five minutes from US one, and I didn't even get it. Dude, I haven't lived in Miami in like ten US years, US and I got one. the joke. Come on, man. Damn, I Max, that's a good one, brother. My my bad, my bad. That's a good one. Um, and, and up here they call it Route one, and I call it US one, and everyone yeah. else calls it Route one. I get lit that funny, but you know. And by I, the way, it's I got really so much Miami bad. in me. I'm never calling it Route one. It's it's really not that bad. Um, to drive to the Hard Rock, man. Everybody says it's like an hour and fifteen. No, and, and yeah, and, if you live in West Palm Beach, or, but, you know, Lake but Lake, well, no, but I mean, if you look at our fans come from the Tri County area, there's right. like all the highways intersect there. That's why Joe Robbie put it there. Like there right. is actually a reason it's there. Yeah, it wasn't. It's, smart. it's not really close to anything, but it's not far from anything either. Right. And yeah. if it's six or seven times a year, it's fine. That's why the Heat want to be downtown, right? Forty-one times a year, you're not making that drive. Yeah. Right. But but yeah. six seven you'll make the drive. The team's good, so exactly. I don't really have a problem with it. Uh, let's let's end with that, uh, Vish. Uh, what you what you brought up the uh, new AD coach, uh, new AD coach, new athletic director, uh, Dan Radakovich. Uh, apparently, it looks like he's going to be announced uh, tomorrow morning. A lot of outlets have already confirmed it. I can't believe that Paul is drinking fucking milk on this show. This is it's protein. It's protein. It's uh, not it's milk. Protein. So yeah, Gary drinking, commented about that earlier. I'll yeah, find the uh... milk. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Gary is our peanut gallery who razzes all of us. Um, no yeah, Nebraska jokes today. Oh, I'm a little upset, but uh. Uh, anyway, I'm very disappointed. But Vish will have some for me later, Gary. So not to worry. <laughs> yeah, here, here. Gary did notice the, the the milk like an hour ago. So here you go. I would drink Kool Aid and or corn based beverages. <laughs> 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 oh man! I'd like to drink this in an actual like you know those protein bottles. Instead, thought, of a, I, instead of a glass, I probably <laughs> I could have made better decisions. I thought Paul was drinking some warm milk. No, no, no. Paul, Paul, Paul is smart. He puts it in the glass. Don't give them free advertising with like the branding bottle, man. Make oh. them pay for that. True. True. Sorry, the six day cane show. So yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, there was a the basket joke embedded there somewhere. All right, Gary. Um, back to it. Uh, Dan Radakovich. Toast. Talk to me. What do you, What do you think about? Uh, Totally rad here. We call him rad around these parts. It's uh, Dan Radakovich. And is there still an opportunity for Zoe to come in at some capacity? Uh, I think bringing in rad ends the Zoe thing. Um, and listen, I love the fact that we're bringing in an AD that learned under Jankovic. Like everything fits together so beautifully. <laughs> it's just, you know, um, you know, he met his wife down here uh, back when he was uh, cutting his teeth. He, he got the gig well, like a couple months before they won their first title in 83 um so it's just uh yeah it's perfect and you know so so the career comes full, full circle for him um he's been one of the top you know top five or whatever ad's look what he's done for clemson uh during his run there i mean so he's basically uh jurek without the scandal um and so that is uh you know he's gonna finish his career down here i figure you know he, he has it for like five to seven years or whatever and then he'll probably you know walk away but he will get this thing set and going in the right direction. I, I love the hire. It's it's again, it's a it's shocking that we're gonna have the highest paid AD in the country if that's if it's true. Yeah, and I I kind I kind of feel like Zoe Zoe did his part. Like he he was instrumental in, in everything as well. I I really truly believe that he, you know, um him him kind of having a voice played a big part. And, and I agree with you, Tosa. I think that if uh, a guy like Eddie Nunez may have come in. Yeah, and been the guy. Then yeah, I mean he's he's not not, not to say that he's not a great AD because I think he's done some great things. Uh, he did some great things at LSU. Um, excuse me, at New Mexico, he's doing a great job. But you may have had to bring in a football guy to really get those things going. And and again, I don't know if Cristobal would have been down with that, right? Like may, maybe Cristobal's not down with that as much as he probably loves Zoe and and all these people. You know, you know he he wants full control and he's going to get it now. Um, as a, as a, as the head coach and and Radakovich, all he's going to do is just elevate everything else for him. And, yeah, there's and other stuff he can that. fix. Plenty of all stuff is broken stuff. in that department. Absolutely, <laughs> and with the resources that he's going to be allotted, I think that you know. Yeah, I'm curious. Good. I'm I'm curious how those resources spill into baseball and basketball and women's bat. Like how, how what are we seeing this across the board? Like all of a sudden there's going to be like a signal, like a 50% jump or 800% jump in, in each, uh, each team's operating budget. I'm, I'm curious to see how much trickles down to the other sports. Well, isn't that, isn't that, I think that was one of the things that me and this were talking about is what's going to happen with baseball and basketball. Now, like, are we going to make some changes because 
it kind of feels like there needs to be some changes there, right? Well, there at least needs to be one change. Um, you know, I, I think I think L has uh, built up enough goodwill. He's got a good enough resume. He just got what four four stars uh, to come on board. Even though six months ago the he only had one guy on the active roster, I believe it was it was a mess. Uh, I believe the guy in charge of the baseball team has uh, the biggest worries right now. Yeah. Yeah, um, he's also connected. I know exactly. Daddy, <laughs> so it could Daddy's be. Uh, got some power. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll going to be. We'll be, uh, yeah. be some some cla- head clash there. A couple of comments in the chat I just wanted to address. Um, so we're worried about nepotism hire. Um, I, th- I believe Mario's wife is 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 a, is a Ruiz. Um, not worried about that at all. Oregon hired him. <laughs> he was a, he, no. I mean, we went and pulled a P five coach off of an elite p5 team like they're the best program in the pac 12 so no not worried about that at all um the russell athletic thing so actually i don't know if everyone knows this backstory this is a true story um so radakovich was at georgia tech as their ad before clemson he did sign a pretty terrible contract with uh, russell athletic that had an option to get out of it which he did not exercise i think a couple of months before he left for clemson i think he would have one foot out the door so there are some bitter feelings in Georgia Tech but I feel I, I I choose to view this as he was so all in on the old school canes he signed with Russell Athletics so and you learn from your mistakes <laughs> yeah yeah and, and I think that that that's a that's a good point you learn from your mistakes that was his first AD job like that that that's certainly on his resume though and, and that is why a lot of Georgia Tech people not too happy with him not just that he went left and went to Clemson who you know you have your natural rivals like ours is Florida State theirs is actually Clemson so he kind of went across the that was not not well received for multiple reasons, but yeah, there was a, a little bit of a snafu with the uh, the Russell Athletic contract there. <laughs> wow, that's crazy. Uh, anything else there on the uh, well, baseball? Uh, Jared writes baseball should almost never be down um, in Miami. Uh, there's more baseball talent in Miami than football talent. Listen, yeah, I mean, uh, I, I know firsthand how much talent there is down here in baseball. Yeah, Jazz um, is a baseball guy for those know, that don't, so. don't know, know Jazz. When he mentioned working with Ruiz's son, um, Ruiz's son was a baseball player for us, and Jazz is, Jazz is, Jazz is more baseball are, than football. The actually. Canes are recruiting <laughs> my nephew, who's a freshman right now. No kidding. Where's he yes. a freshman at? He's a freshman at uh, Terravella. Oh, nice. Oh, yep. John, John Terravella, right? John Terravella? Is that what it's called? I don't yeah. know who the, what the name is. It's the high yeah. school. I have no idea. Yeah, Terravilla High. Ter- yeah. yeah I'm Coral sure. Springs. Yeah. Yep. So, so I will just say on the talent aspect, we keep pulling in top five, and I think we actually had the number one class in the country last year, and then they can't hit. <laughs> they yeah. get on campus. So well, last know. year, like, they remember, we, we started off in Gainesville, and we took, like, what, three or four or whatever, or, yeah, or we two of three? Two or three won that And series. then just we're like, oh, yes, this is it, and then. Yeah, it was God. bad. And then, and then they're still using uh, Alex. Did we get swept by FSU last year? We did. We did. That was when the season actually came <laughs> yeah, apart. That's when we, it came apart. Yeah. yeah, we were a top ten team. They yeah. were not even ranked. We were favored to beat them, and we did. They beat the oh, shit. Yeah, out they of beat us. the. Yeah, they, they beat. The, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. They and that's did. when it just it imploded. The whole season imploded on that one. But oh, we got man. we got some good pitching coming back. Anyway, I don't think anyone cares about baseball with me and Jazz and I guess Toast. So we, we, won't, no, we, won't. we do have a couple good. We do have some good pitching coming yeah, back. No, no, absolutely. Yeah, 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 getting Rosario back. Yeah. We got a kid. We got we got the catcher from Vanderbilt who transferred over to us too. So that's yeah. Uh, yeah no, the talent is there. So yeah, it's just it's, which is why it's even more focus on the the co- and you know JD can can get a pitching staff out of crap. Mm-hmm. It's really the hitting. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it looks like uh, well, uh, and then I guess lastly here. Um, the coach, I, I think the coaching staff, if we, I guess we can end this with this because I think that, you know, a lot of people still want to talk about coaching and the coaching staff. And I think, look, the next couple of weeks is going to be the next week or so. I don't know. Let's put it this way. I don't know if Mario is going to, it's, it's tricky, man. It's a fine line because national signing day is Wednesday and he's got, he's hit the ground running. And he's got so many guys to see and so many guys that he might want to try to flip or kind of convince that this is a place. And if there's anybody that could do it is, it is Coach Cristobal. But I think he needs to start having some guys in place already as well on this staff um, that can kind of, quote, unquote, sell sell uh, these, these kids to coming here to Miami as well. So I think it's going to be a tricky thing. Um, as far as how this coaching staff is gonna is is gonna be put together, especially with uh, National Signing Day being you know early signing day being you know less than a week away now, or at least a, actually a week away, so it's gonna be interesting to see. But I think that 
if Joe Brady wants to be here, he's going to be here. That's it. If Joe Brady wants it, that's the guy. That's going to be the guy. The defensive coordinator position now, on the other hand, I think there's still a lot of names out there that we're still looking at. So I think that one's going to be more interesting. I think we kind of know who the offensive coordinator guys are for the most part that we're looking at. Maybe a guy like Tom Herman uh, might still be in play. Um, and, and we see if I got a name for you. Yeah. Chud. I just don't know if he's going to leave his comfy position over there. He's uh, an the, analyst at Boston a, College. Yeah, he's home. He's <laughs> chilling. Hey, Danny yeah. can talk. Danny's in Boston. I know you're a Bostonian too, Toast, but uh, Danny's up in Boston right now. Uh, I think he's he's uh, neighbors with, with Chud over there. Yeah, it's yeah, it's pretty interesting up here because uh, Jeff Halfley just signed a five-year deal, so I'm interested to see where they go. Not that Boston College football is any good. I'll be the first to tell you. And then I root for Nebraska, so apparently I'm just really good at rooting for a sucky football team, so there you go. But, you know. Hey, man, no one made you wear a Nebraska sweatshirt on one of these shows like a month ago. That was all you. And I you was cold. I don't have the luxury of all you cute Florida people in the nice 75-degree weather. Vish, I know you're in Washington, but still. It's in the, it's in the 30s here, man. Yeah, yeah it's, yeah, it's in the 30s there, too, and i got to wear long sleeves, so all of you be those. quiet, Look except for those. Toast, because. Toast hasn't given me any grief, so I like you, Toast. All the rest of you, actually, I don't see Paul either, so Paul, you can stay. But Look Jazz, you leave. I yeah, Jazz, you, you leave. Goodbye, Jazz. Look at you both <laughs> wearing your long sleeve shirts while me toasting. I don't even. I don't know, Paul. Uh, we're wearing the shirts. <laughs> I'm driving up to you in full blast, two weeks. So. So I'm gonna freeze my ass off. Where are you driving up to, folks? Uh, driving up to see my uh, for Christmas. Driving up to spend a week in Connecticut. It's Ooh. like that we drive up on Christmas Eve, and yeah, yeah, yeah it's gonna be cold. So, uh, freeze our asses off. Oh man, oh man. Anyways, uh, I think we'll, end, we'll end it with that while um, while D Danny brings heavily into the mic there, really quick. That was kind of sexy, but it's over now. Um, <laughs> Paul, Paul, Danny. Um, Thank you guys for coming on the show. And, of course, Toast, man. Thank you. It's been a long time coming. Guys, thank you, man. It was awesome. It. Had a good time. It was nice, it was nice being on with all you guys. Absolutely. Whenever you want to come on again, let us know. Roman's always invited. The whole crew, the OBB crew, is always invited to come on cool. and, and, and uh, shoot the breeze with us here, man. I truly appreciate it. Vish, always a pleasure. Thanks for um, – Thanks for producing the yeah. show and, and shooting the breeze yeah, as well. Yeah, real quick, four of us are on Five Reasons Toast. You want? I mean, everyone knows Toast. Yeah, you want to well, yeah, tell them where they can plug. find you. Yeah, go and do your plugs, man. <laughs> my Oh, my plug. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, just yeah. On, on Twitter, at IB Toast or at Orange Bowl Boys. Uh, that's where you find me, yeah. And follow me on Twitch, too, if you want, IB Toast. Awesome. When's your show? When, when do you guys uh, throw out the podcast? Uh, the pot, we're going to do another one, I think, uh, either Friday or Monday. We're working on, uh, we're working on a special guest. Nice, nice. All right. Sounds good, man. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Paul, uh, let them know where they can find you. I mean, pretty much first last name, Paul Austria underscore. Uh, find me on Twitter, find me on Instagram. Um, definitely going to keep up with more Miami stuff lately. But I mean, it's more exciting now, so I'll admit that that definitely inclines me more to, to be more vocal on Twitter. Um, but, yeah, I'll definitely try to make more appearances on the show, too. So we'll see. DJ. At DGillette95, like Paul, now things are getting exciting, so I'll probably be more inclined to write a little bit. But, um, yeah, you can find me at DGillette95, and you can read all of my wonderful, accurate takes on my Twitter account. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is um, the uh, writer extraordinaire and uh, governs the Canes really well for Five Reasons Sports. Also, Vish, let him know. Yep. Yeah. VRP 2003. I've got a couple of things out. Um, one on kind of the uh, the coverage of the Canes over the last couple of weeks, and then another one um, just on kind of. I don't know if anyone wants to read this anymore, but bookending the Manny Diaz era. We've we've moved on mentally, so that one might be a tough read. But um, yeah. No. I'm I'm going. I still haven't actually written anything on Mario, so we'll have something on that later uh, oh, this week. That should be well, the good. The thing he wrote today was awesome. The piece he wrote today was awesome. Check it out. Yes, it Thanks. was. Thanks. Yes, it was. And Gary still with the joke. Somebody already had the Paul Austria Twitter because you had to put an underscore. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Gary Cabot is our resident uh, comedian over here. <laughs> I, I, oh, that, that is why I had to add that. <laughs> and, it's, and it's like it's some dude from like. Early 2000s or Wait, something. there's actually a Paul Austria. Oh, Wait, hold on. That's real? Yeah. It's, That's really what happened? Yeah. Like, I, <laughs> ideally, I would have had that handle, but 
I don't know, man. It's just some dude that probably never checks his Twitter or Instagram ever. And I'm like, damn it, man. He's got to adjust. He's got to adjust. <laughs> Gary also put fish. Send it to. Send no, there, it there's to a, there's a, back, I'll own that. There's, there, there's a backstory on that. I had mixed up there and there somewhere in that article. He found it and he DM'd it rather than embarrass me. Wow. And I, and I fixed it. So no, I, I will, I will own that mistake. And Gary was stand up and did not do it publicly. And he DM'd me and he's like, dude. This is wrong. And I'm like, yes, it is. <laughs> and I edited it, and no one noticed. <laughs> oh, man. That's so Gary, Gary had my back there. I, I will own that screw up, though. Gary's the man. <laughs> and make sure you check us out at Six Rings Canes right there. That's the Twitter handle. You can catch all of our uh, Canes coverage on there and on the Five Reasons Sports Network. Uh, catch this show every Wednesday at 8.30 on the Five Reasons Sports YouTube channel and also on the YouTube network. Uh, channel as well make sure that you guys follow us and watch us next wednesday for a recruiting special we'll have some big names on as well uh to talk some recruiting um in lieu of national signing day early national signing day which is the same day as well so uh thank you all for uh for coming on thank you for everybody that was watching and we'll see you guys again next wednesday it's all about the Hugo canes <laughs>